Hello everyone and welcome back to the Steph Zone channel. If you're joining me here for the first time, I am so excited to have you. For this video, I'm going to be showcasing my projects from April, from May, and from early June, really late spring and start of the summer. Uh, we actually have quite a lot of ground to cover here. There's vintage patterns, modern patterns, tops, dresses, another pair of jeans, even a little bit of knitting. Looking back at the last few months, I'm actually, you know, I'm kind of impressed with how much I was able to get done. Work has been really, really busy for me, so I've definitely been lacking in sewing and knitting time. Uh, so I'm actually really happy to have, like, a, we'll call it an early summer collection to talk you all through. I actually spoke about several of these projects in my kind of plans video from a few months ago, and I've been able to make most of the projects that are mentioned in there. I think that the one change is that the weather here has warmed up so much faster than it has in prior years. Usually kind of early, early summer here in the UK, at least in London, I find that I can still be wearing long sleeve shirts, trousers, especially in the evening, things get quite cool. But this year it's just been hot. It got hot really quickly, it stayed hot. So some of the projects that I mentioned in that video just didn't really make a lot of sense. Anyway, very excited to do my little showcase here, and for each project I'm going to give you an overview of the pattern I used, the fabric I used, um, any reflections that I have on construction and fit. So hopefully this should give you a good overview and maybe some inspiration for projects of your own. With that in mind, let's jump into it. First up, I think it makes sense to just start with the top that I'm wearing right now. This blouse is made from another one of my vintage patterns, and what makes this one a bit special is that it's actually a menswear pattern. It's from the 1970s, which I always love, and I find that menswear patterns from that era, especially tops that are kind of designed for knits, tend to actually fit really well in my wardrobe as long as I make them in a fabric that really just suits the rest of my clothes. In terms of the pattern itself, it's a vintage simplicity pattern, 6694, and I'll just get a bit closer, you can see all of these sassy little dudes. I made version two, so the guy in blue, and you can see here it has raglan sleeves, um, just a deep V neckline. Other versions have a zip or a little bit of a keyhole opening, short sleeves with cuffs, and I left off the band at the bottom. You'll also have noticed that this was a men's size small, so a 34 to 36 inch chest. Um, that is actually a little bit smaller than the sizing I would typically go for in a women's pattern, but I had two factors working in my favor with this. The first is that because this is a menswear pattern, they tend to feature a bit more ease than some women's patterns do. So after I bought this, I just measured the pieces and found that it would definitely fit around my chest with plenty of ease. The second point is that this was also a pattern that is designed for stretch knit fabric. And I don't know if you've ever kind of held 1970s double knit fabric. Um, it typically doesn't have like spandex or elastane in it. And to be honest, it's just not very stretchy. So the patterns almost never have a bunch of negative ease or anything like that. So I figured that this was going to be able to fit me pretty easily. The fabric I chose for this is this very hot pink um, knit fabric. It's actually a wool knit that I picked up at Mood Fabrics the last time that I was in New York. The color is really saturated, which I love. You can almost see it has like a bit of a neon glow to it. In terms of construction though, like I said, very simple. Raglan sleeves, um, a flat collar, so there's no collar stand or anything like that. There's just a, a facing around the neckline that is then top stitched down to give the appearance of a yoke. I've gotten so much wear out of this already, um, mainly in April, but to be honest, it's now too warm to wear it. Um, it's a lightweight wool, but it, you know, it's still wool. Um, especially with like the kind of puffy cuff sleeve. This is not something that I wanna wear on a really hot, humid, sticky day. I am though excited to wear it again, hopefully when the weather cools down a bit later in the year. For my next project, I actually have the blouse that I wore in my last video. And based on the reactions in the comments on that video, as well as in a TikTok I made where I featured this top, it's something that you guys are really loving and really interested in. This blouse is actually made with one of my tried and true vintage patterns. It's actually a very easy Vogue pattern and I find it to be incredibly versatile. This version is definitely on the dressier side, but I've also made it in kind of a hot, it was not a hot pink, it was a mint green linen, um, which was really just really lightweight, very versatile. It's something that I wear all the time at the beach and things like that. This print is of course from the Incredible Stitch Fabrics. Um, just because I featured them in my last video, I'm not going to go through the whole spiel about the company again, but the kind of TLDR version of that is that they source the most incredible prints. 
In terms of the garment itself, this one is very simple. You have construction wise, just uh, really no darts, there's no shaping. It's just a, it's actually, it appears to be a yoke. It's not, it's the kind of top edge of the back coming over the shoulders. You gather the front bodice pieces into that. Um, again, a flat collar and just a half pocket um, and some cuff sleeves. It's something that I think kind of a confident beginner could really easily tackle. Where I really spent my time for this project though was on the pattern placement. The panel print had so many incredible little details. There's so many kind of interesting scenes within the image. And what I really wanted to do was make sure that I was maximizing the print, but still ending up with a blouse that felt balanced in terms of how I was using the different aspects of the image. Because of that, I eventually settled on a kind of a face on one side. I have the kind of, it's a bit of a, like a screaming sheep, to be honest, on the other side. I used the landscape scene on the back and I even put kind of sculptural elements on both of the sleeves to add again a little bit more balance there. This is my favorite garment that I've made recently and to be honest, I'm wearing it as much as I possibly can without people think that, thinking that I'm being like weird or attention seeking in it. Moving on to a modern pattern, I actually have another pair of jeans to show you all. For anyone who watched the very first video I posted on my channel, I have the Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans. Those were very much a very traditional pair of jeans, so rigid denim, no, no stretch to them, um, top stitch waistband, back yoke, the integrated pockets, kind of the full works that you would expect from a jeans pattern. It was very clear from the feedback on that that people were looking for a jeans pattern that felt a little bit more accessible to beginners, especially one that would be quicker to put together, a little bit less top stitching, and I think most importantly, easier to fit. These jeans, which are the Chalk and Notch Isle jeans, I think really fit the bill. I love them just because they have very much that 70s inspired look that really works with my wardrobe, the super high waist. This version is the flared leg. It also comes in kind of a wide straight leg and the patch pockets in the front as opposed to the integrated jeans pocket. Beyond the style elements though, there's a number of things that make these just a little bit more accessible. The first is the darts. I think that's probably the most important thing. Rather than having to kind of grade across the pattern pieces if you want to adjust the sizing, this pattern has two darts in the front and uh, four in the back. So you can really kind of perfect the fit without worrying about then blending into the waistband. Instead of a waistband, you actually have a facing piece. So there's a curved facing that is then just top stitched down to form the look of a waistband again without the kind of fitting considerations that go into a waistband. Similarly, the fact that you have patch pockets rather than an integrated jeans pocket really just makes the entire pair of jeans come together much more quickly. In terms of fabric, um, these use stretch denim as well as opposed to rigid denim, which again, just gives you a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to the fit. The denim I used is from Stitch Fabrics again, and this is, um, a, it's a really lovely stretch denim. I think they call it their Italian, like Italian organic stretch denim or something like that. Um, and there was the one mistake I made with this. It has nothing to do with the pattern or the quality of the fabric. It's just that the stretch percentage um, in this fabric was just slightly higher than what the, uh, what the pattern actually called for. And I found that actually after having worn these a bit that it has just stretched a little bit and that I probably could have sized down, especially in the waist. Still though, with a belt, it's completely fine. Um, I'm getting loads of wear out of them and I think it really um, helps to just have more than one pair of jeans. Right now I've been like wearing the Dawn jeans over and over. So I'm happy to be able to experiment with styles a little bit more. Next up, we have my main knitting project for this month. If you watched my plants video, you'll know that I was talking a very big game about how I was gonna knit a sweater and it was gonna be so perfect for kind of cool summer nights here in the UK. Then we had a historic heat wave. It's gotten warm, it stayed warm, and a sweater is completely impractical. So this sweater is sadly sitting here. It's actually in this bag. It's like 75% done. I mean, the full body is done and the neck band, a sleeve is done, but I don't have any motivation to finish it. I mean, like a long sleeved, worsted weight, wool rib knit sweater. It's just gonna have to wait till autumn. Instead, I pivoted to a true summer knit, which is what led me to the My Favorite Things Knitwear Camisole number no. four. Um, this little camisole, it, it's pretty simple, um, even for someone who hasn't knit something like this before. It's knit from the top down all the way in a broken rib. You knit a few triangles, join them in the round, and just knit until it's the desired length. I used this very sweet colorway of Knitting for Olive Pure Silk that I picked up from beautiful knitters here in London, and I'm really happy with the color, I'm happy with the texture of the fabric, but I have to say I'm a little bit unsure about this one. 
Um, I think that the shape is beautiful, but I'm just really not a fan of how much this yarn stretches. I wish that I would have read more on Ravelry about it because I know that others kind of feel the same way. Um, I've blocked this one so far and I was really shocked at how much it just stretched and stretched and stretched. And I'm just worried that it's going to end up being a bit saggy. Um, I love the texture though, uh, but it seems like as I've worn it, I mean, this is after blocking once and I've really only worn it out once, um, but the armholes are starting to get very deep. Um, it's stretching down in the front. The straps continue to stretch. I made them really short because I did kind of check and saw that people mentioned the straps stretching out. Um, so I'm just worried that as I keep wearing this, it'll eventually kind of lose the shape that I'm so fond of. If I were to make this pattern again, I think that I would probably just use something like a wool silk mix, maybe something to get a little bit of that elasticity back, or I would just size down in the whole garment overall. Um, so it remains to be seen. I don't want to give up on it right away because I think it is really pretty, uh, but just, yeah, maybe not my favorite yarn choice for something that I want, you know, I didn't want it to be tight, but I was hoping that it would be body skimming and I don't want to have to fully reblock it like every time I wear it. We'll see though, I'm, you know, let me know what you think. I mean, if it's, I think it's cute. I'm just not sure how it's gonna wear, unfortunately. So the last project to speak through today is a dress and I made this from yet another vintage pattern. I actually don't have the pattern on me. Um, I lent it to a friend already, so, so I'll pop up a picture if I am able to just remember where I ordered it from. Now, like the first blouse I mentioned, I had the issue with this pattern where it was a size smaller than what I would typically wear. Um, because of that, there were two changes that I made in terms of how the garment was constructed. The first one, very, very basic. I just graded out at the hips to make sure that I was gonna be roomy enough. You can always just measure around I like to do about eight to nine inches down from the waistline and then just make sure that you're grading out to the full width of your hips at that point, plus the desired ease. The other trick that I used, which is something that I often do when using vintage patterns that are not exactly my size, is to just use a knit fabric instead of a woven fabric. Of course, you do want to be careful with how you approach this. Um, you need to consider kind of the weight of the knit, the level of elasticity, um, if it's kind of slinky versus something more stable. For this, because it was meant for kind of more like a lightweight cotton fabric, I used a, this is actually a cotton silk jersey mix. It doesn't have any elastane, it is just kind of mechanical stretch. So pretty lightweight, but something that I knew could hold up to a little bit of interfacing the yoke and things like that. Construction wise, again, very simple, um, with the exception of the yoke piece, which I'll come to, uh, but it has a kind of deep V and set yoke. Um, the rest of the dress is really just a shift dress. You gather the pieces on, the front bodice pieces onto the yoke. It has a little flat collar and then the back just has some darts, but is otherwise pretty plain. I think what makes this so special is the fabric choice. However, in terms of this yoke and the v-neck, because this is jersey and it's jersey with basically no recovery, um, I actually stretched out the v a little bit when I inserted the yoke the first time. And it wasn't something that I could easily pick out without kind of stretching it out even more or tearing apart the fabric. It looked really sloppy initially and I got really <laughs> nervous and upset uh, because I had ordered this fabric from Italy. It's from Tosca Italian Fabrics. Um, they do a lot of these kind of Keelam inspired prints, but it was something that it was a panel. They are sold out of it, or at least they were when I went to look. And so I was really worried that I was going to end up with something that I had to really, really change to make it wearable. So I did what I always do um, when my sewing projects go wrong and I called my mom. Um, early 30s, you know, you're not too old to just go cry into your mother and see if she can fix it. Um, and she gave me good, great advice, as she always does. Um, and she recommended that I use a bit of a stripe in the fabric to make a bit of trim, which I then hand sewed across the edges of the yoke. That totally hid the kind of wonkiness and the fold that I had at the front of the v-neck. And it just all looks a lot more intentional and pulled together than it did before. So I'm really, really happy that she gave me that advice. I'm much happier with the finished result. The other consideration with this garment in terms of pattern placement was that this garment has a one motif that it's a little bit dicey. Um, when I was planning how I was going to use the print, I knew that I wanted to have this kind of deep orange section around my midriff, um, same on the back. I'll pop in a picture of the shape that I'm talking about. It's one of those shapes where you really do not want this kind of, you know, on your giblets or on your behind. Like it would just completely be distracting. It would destroy the look of the garment. I was even a little bit worried whether I wanted to use it at all on a dress just because of this shape. I've had some incidents with pattern placement in the past. 
Um, because of that though, I just made sure to balance the print as best as I could with the central motif, but also make sure that shape was positioned as low as I could, so nowhere near kind of the midline of the body. Um, to be honest, when worn, it's not really super noticeable anymore, and I'm totally comfortable wearing it. I think the silk jersey, it's like a really lightweight, it has a very dry feel, and it's perfect for the hot weather we've been having. I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this one on holiday. So I think it was a good example of a snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. I mean, whether it's me or my mom, <laughs> you know, I think we both get credit for it, but I'm really happy with it. Well, that covers all the projects I wanted to cover this week. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, with that though, I would love to know what projects that you're working on, what's top of mind for summer, pattern recommendations, style inspiration, um, especially if it's warm where you are, I am really very much all ears. Personally, I'm still leaning towards diving into my vintage pattern collection even more, or vintage inspired modern patterns. Um, I have to say the modern patterns right now, especially the indies, are just really, really not doing it for me. If I see one more pattern for like, here's elastic waist crop trousers, here's a boxy tunic top that you can make in linen, here's a tiered gathered skirt or dress, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> I'm so over it. I don't know why every pattern company needs to release like designs for these. But anyway, um, if you do want to see more of my projects, don't forget to subscribe. And you can also join me over on Instagram. I have the same handle, at Steph Zone, and you'll see more of the behind the scenes of my makes. Um, you'll get to see my makes before I post them on YouTube. And again, it gives me the opportunity to see what you're working on. And you can DM me there anytime. I'm always happy to have a chat. Thanks again for joining me though. And I can't wait to see you soon for my next video. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye.